So this is Spellbinder with an essay written by Dr. Mark Sikrus, or Sikrus, I guess S-I-R-C-U-S, on the 9th of July, 2010. Are apocalyptic events closing in on us? I'm going to read about half of this because I try over and over again to read the whole thing and I cannot fit it in 10 minutes. So I'm going to read about half of it and explain the rest and then close up from there. After watching some of the videos you will see in this essay, I cried and felt remorse for the living on this planet at this particular moment in human history where all must confront a terrible destiny whose clear outline has taken shape in the Gulf states. Life is hard but about to get exceptionally more difficult for just about everyone who is not prepared for what is coming down at us on an accelerating pace. And with the natural laws of synchronicity working fine as they usually do, we can expect even more surprises than the ones that are already showing up on the radar. Stand by for evasive action. The nation of Mexico is in the midst of a failed state breakdown into pure chaos. Jim Willie. The mainstream and of course the government cannot possibly deal honestly with anything that is going on, but there comes a point when the news is so bad that simply must be presented with some level of comprehensiveness, and that is happening today, writes the Daily Bell, which also says, in order to maintain the credibility in mainstream news organizations, a good deal of real information must be reported, both good and bad. Well, the bad is leaking out all over the place, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, where perhaps the greatest disaster humanity has ever had to face is taking place. What I have to write about today is not for the faint-hearted, nor or for fluffballs who just want everything to be nice and want serious problems to go away by themselves. Life is being presented to us in 2010 is not for the weak. In fact, many of our concepts and defenses are going to be rolled up by the events happening so far sh on far shores as well as local environments near our homes. I wish it was the only great disaster humanity had to face, but it's not the case. We have a story of biblical proportions shaping up, but certain are centered mostly strongly in the North American continent where the richest nations on earth goes through her death throes, which will probably be violent ones. What is happening though is happening to the world. One does not have to be a psychic or have the handwriting on the wall, but our resistance to change is paramount to keeping people frozen like deer caught in front of the headlights. We have a nightmarish ecological disaster riding on top of financial and economic disasters, meeting up with a violent climate change and global cooling, which is directly threatening world food supplies. Four horsemen are riding in our collective direction and their hooves are going to crush a great part of humanity. Some people are very happy about that since their goal is to reduce humanity down to about 500 million souls who they will abuse and control. Georgia Guidestones. And this speaks nothing of our current wars, the wars that are ominous and are the political and corporate leaderships that cannot face any of these threats in an intellectual or compassionate way. Most people cannot hear the hoofs of the four apocalypse horsemen coming up the street. The first horseman of the apocalypse is mentioned in Revelation 6-2. I looked up, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. Then another horse came out, a fiery one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. The second horseman refers to the terrible warfare that will break out at end times. The third horseman was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in its hand. The third horseman in the apocalypse refers to the great bantam that will take place. The fourth, the fourth horseman is symbolic of death and devastation. Great Phantom. Several recent headlines indicate that food prices will continue their climb upward. These troubling new reports show that the agriculture production and stored grains are critically low and experts are predicting food shortages. The very likely possibility of a food shortage scare is rising as crop conditions deteriorate across the world. We're talking big potatoes here, so eat up while you can. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, just cut the acreage of corn planting this year by 1 million from the 88 million projected on March 31st. It left traders using terms such as game changer and shocking. The government report shows 1 million fewer acres of corn planted this year than earlier projected and almost 300 million fewer bushels of corn in storage. That's a lot of food. Now add about 25 million acres underwater in Canada and that's a lot of bellies going to go hungry in the north next winter. 
the if the USDA is right and then it turns out we don't have these big corn surpluses after all and that leaves the market vulnerable to weather said Dr. Don Roos uh, president of the US commodities in West Des Moines it's bad news all around the world Thailand Vietnam and the world's two largest rice exporters face several drought conditions that threaten to severely undermine the year's crops and global supplies. Severe food shortages follow lack of rainfall in Syria, and now crops are being damaged by the toxic rain from the Gulf disaster, mounting evidence suggesting that the oil dispersant Coexit 9500 can phase transition and could be entering the clouds to form a toxic rain over the region. On July 1st, Governor Chris Gregory asked the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Valsic, to designate 29 counties in Washington as farm disaster areas due to weather-related losses. The damage was the result of extreme weather conditions throughout the spring, including severe cold winds and excessive range. Potato and alfalfa crops were severely damaged after a freezing wind swept through the East Idaho in the middle of June. Temperatures dropped as low as 28 degrees, freezing the crops within minutes. Don't let the eastern seaboard heat fool you. It's getting cooler in the world because the Federal Reserve could not figure out a way of extending credit to the sun so it would increase solar output. The evidence is mounting as one region after another checks in with their disasters, whether too much rain or too little, the cold, the toxic pollution destroying a rich sea source of food in the Gulf, or acid rain, oil rain destroying foods on the land, that the world will begin to run out of food at the end of 2010-2011. When this happens, the resulting triple-digit food inflation will lead to mass starvation as initially price will determine availability in the face of food shortages life will change dramatically and in a very short period of time so plant your gardens now don't have to be an end of time survivalist to believe that planting and storing food is pragmatic everyone with resources can and should design a good food storage and rotation system and buy bulk food as an investment along with creating self-sufficiency the world the world's corporations are doing approximately 2.2 trillion dollars worth of damage to the environment every year according to the report commissioned by the UN Environmental Protection and Principles of Responsible and Investment Initiative. The study was carried out by researchers at London based consulting firm TrueCost, which pretends a ghastly story of death, disease, and destruction. Part of its this toxicity having an impact on the quality and even the quality of food available on our dinner plates and is going on year after year is rising up to spike our cells like poisonous snakes. The Gulf of Mexico is fast turning into a kill zone both economic, uh, ecologically and economically whose impact will be powerful and soon. Dr. Palmer from the University of Texas and part of Harvard Research Team has told us how the polluted the Gulf region is with mercury, which is already having a direct effect on our children by playing part in the devastating epidemic neurological disorders, including autism. It is not just the fish, the vaccines, or the dental um, algorithms that are saturating our bodies with mercury. Americans and people around the world are going to have to wake up to the fact that mercury is in the air they breathe, in the soil they plant in, in the water they drink, and so are a lot of other deadly chemicals building up in the environment and now we have the Gulf adding to millions to two million gallons more of pure toxicity to the area each day and I'm going to end it right about here because now it talks about the war how we're going in and we're trying to take Iran now I mean, we're trying to start World War III our world government is trying to start it they want this to happen if it's if it's nothing else, I think they're trying to make revelations happen. I really do. I think they're really trying to make us believe that revelations is going to happen, even though a lot of this they've created themselves. And they're using it as a playbook for an economic collapse and to get rid of 90% of the population. All right, that's it. That's 1138. Watch the movie. THX 1138. You'll, you'll see how they want us to be. We're nothing but robots with flesh. With robots watching us. Uh, the police. Well, until next time, I'm going to let go here. I'm going to put all this, I'm going to put a link to this page at the bottom of the video. And you can go and read this whole thing to yourself. But it's bad. It is really, really bad. I see the apocalypse happening now just because all this stuff is coming at once. It's not just like just the oil thing. No, it's financial. It's the wars on the horizon. It's all this stuff is coming in waves and it's going to 
write us in the button if we don't wake up to it. And don't sit there and say, we can do nothing. It's proof. It's, no. If they're actually doing it, we can stop it. If the world, world elite are doing this, we can stop it. It's not God's doing. It's their doing. Until next time, this is Spellbinder. Be good. Be good at it. Prepare. Stock up. Have a good day.